if you're shanking or just striking out the heel any of your short game shots, there's only two reasons why. I'm going to show you the exact reasons and what you can do about it in this real simple short game video. Make sure you check it out now. So it may seem a little strange that I'm standing right next to the hedge, but this is a great idea for anyone who is struggling with a heel contact with their wedges. Now it doesn't have to be a hedge, I just have this here available. So you could just put your golf bag behind you, uh, you could get a laptop stand or a music stand perhaps against your backside. Without hitting golf balls obviously it could just be a, a shelf of some kind, the kitchen island, but if you can get outside and put something there, maybe the back of a chair or stall against your backside and do some in the garden or on the driving range, it's really going to transform your short game. So most people are struggling with a heel contact, are getting their body moving towards the golf ball. So part of what I was doing here was keeping my backside touching the hedge as I swung back, as I swung into impact, and even on the way through. So I felt like there is some hip rotation. It, obviously, the shorter the shot, the less rotation, but my right hip is turning a little bit behind me into the hedge. As I start down, both bum cheeks are still touching the hedge line here, and then it's gonna be in my left hip on the way through. And I was obviously just trying to hit the ball just straight down the line of the hedge here. So not worrying about the flags just for this one. And it was just trying to get that sensation of keeping my backside back. As I said, most shankers, most people struggling with the heel, we see their backside moving forwards towards the, the golf ball. The same reason they would get it actually with an iron shot. They just may be a little bit more prone with their wedges to striking out the heel with the amount of almost offset there on the head. Now the secondary point, and it is linked to the first, is their arms or the club moving out away from them. So the same as the backside moving forward towards the ball, it can be their arms. Now, obviously, if one happens, the other may well happen. So if my arms move out, does my backside move forwards and my pressure my toes? Definitely. If I can keep my bum back, my arms should be closer to my body. But I have seen someone really improve their backside line and still get their arms too far out in front of them. So the hedge had a second point here. I was just trying to almost feel like the club touched the hedge line on the way back, or at least parallel to it, and touched the hedge line on the way through. So I'm working on more of an arc. I want to feel like the club is moving inside on the way back, down that line, gradually moving out towards the ball and then inside on the way through. Those who are struggling with a heel strike, they're getting their arms moving or the club excessively out in front of them towards the golf ball. So that could be the club head or it could be the arms or a bit of both in there. So I want you to try and get that sensation of almost running down the hedge line a little bit as we arc and then back to the hedge line on the way through. So it can really help your path. Now, obviously with something here, because of the height of it, I can really only be making swings that get to around my waist height. I can't go too, too far. So I can only be hitting you know, 20-ish yard shots, 30 yard shots. I can't be swinging too far because the club would be going into the hedge. But if it's something just against your backside, like a, a chair or stall, obviously you could start to make some longer swings. If that's where you find your trouble lies. I find most people, if they're, they're shanking it with a wedge, it doesn't really matter whether it's quarter swing, half swing or a full swing. Sometimes they find they're worse with the shorter shots. Um, but each their own. This is a great exercise to keep the bum back and feel like my arms are working on that arc, not moving excessively out away from me. So let me hit one more here. Backside's gonna stay on the hedge. I'm just gonna get the club on the hedge line and on the hedge line. So I'm working on an arced path. And you can see another good contact grazing the turf, nowhere near the, the, the heel. Actually, that felt very middle to me. Just got the sensation my bum was on the line, but it'd be a good idea to get it on video and have a little look back. And you can run it through uh, an app. I would recommend the V1 coaching app for free, where you can just get yourself on video, have a little look where your backside line is, draw that line on there, and just see is it moving excessively forwards towards the golf ball. You could even draw a little circle or a box around your hands and just see again if they're moving excessively out. 
So the, for me, the hedge drill is great for the path and the backside line. I've got one other exercise I want you to do, and you could actually sort of combine the two. I had one, lessons, one lesson I did combine the two exercises and it worked brilliantly for her. So this one is just gonna be a two ball drill. I'm gonna show it separately. What we're gonna do is get one ball in the middle of the club, and we're gonna put the second ball just on the outside edge of the toe of the golf club. Okay, so there's almost just a tee peg's width from the toe of the golf club to the outside golf ball. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up to the outside ball, but strike the inner golf ball here. So I've effectively got to get my arms in closer to my body. And again, if I get my arms in closer to my body, I should be doing that by creating the hip depth, okay? So I'm keeping my backside out to allow room for my hands. So I'm gonna set up to the outside one. That's Let's pretend we're going for a target. So let's go for maybe the top middle flag on the green here. That still works. You don't have to have a target in mind. So I'm setting up to the outside ball. I'm gonna strike the inner one. That means I'm getting my arms in closer to my body. Remember that heel shots, shanks are really being caused by the backside and the arms moving out towards the golf ball. As that happens, the pressure goes to the toes. So what you may well feel when you're getting your arms closer to your body and keeping your bum out is you might feel the opposite, that your pressure's a little bit more into your heels. Let's give this a go. Not the best strike in the world, I'll be honest. I caught the ground a little bit before the golf ball, but that's what the bounce is there for on the wedge of the, of the golf club. You can see it didn't really affect me. It pretty much went down my target line, rolled to the top of the hill and came back down. But importantly, when you're trying this exercise, I've hit the inner ball and missed the outer golf ball. So I know that my arms are closer to my body. Now, how do I achieve that? I, I sort of felt like my arms were working a little bit on a loop. So a little bit closer to my body and I created that hip depth. So let's finish with one. I've only got one golf ball left with no exercises here, but just trying to get that same sensation that I'm keeping my bum back, getting my arms closer to my body. Now, I could on the course, when you get to one ball, just focus on almost more the inside of the golf ball rather than the outside. So rather than the club getting out in front of me, if I focus more on the part of the ball that's closer to me, that could really be a way I could take it to the golf course. And there we go. Very, very happy with that one. So if you have been struggling with shanks or just anything that is too close for comfort out of the heel of the golf club, those exercises are really gonna help. Something against your backside, it's also working quite well if you can get on the hedge in the garden to feel that the hand path, the club path, is not moving excessively out. And then that two ball exercise, if you've never tried it before, it is really off-putting, it is tough, but don't give up on it after a couple of shots. Persevere with it, whether it's in the garden or on the driving range, and it's really gonna improve your quality of contact by the time you get to the real ball situation, just one in there. If the video has helped, hit the thumbs up, share it with as many golfers as you can, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, at least two instructional videos a week. Right now, YouTube is suggesting the next video from me that's relevant for you, and it's just here, so click on that and check it out.